Hello, Cecilia Manguera Brainerd here to give a brief talk about Ben Santos. Many thanks to Dr. Ronald Baitan, Dr. John Emerald Teodoro, and all of at the Bienvenido and Santos Creative Writing Center and the De La Salle University for including me in your program. I am delighted that Ben Santos's name and legacy live on because he was indeed a special man and a fine writer. I had the privilege of meeting Ben Santos in Los Angeles in the mid 1980s when I was what you call an emerging writer. I was not young at this time, but I had a late start with my fiction writing career because of my obligations to my husband and three sons. When my children were in school, I took my fiction writing more seriously and had a few published short stories when I met Ben. Linda Nietes in Los Angeles used to hold literary soirees that featured writers like Ben Santos, NVM Gonzalez, PC Morante, and others. I met these writers at her soirees. To put things in context, in 1985, the number of Filipinos in the US was under a million. Now we are over 4.2 million. In 1985, I had heard of very few Filipino American literary writers. I can count them at my fingers. It was Carlos Bulusan, Jose Garcia Villa, and then Ben Santos and NVM Gonzalez. Back in 1985, published Filipino literary writers were very rare in America. In 1985, Ben had authored a number of books, The Volcano, Villa Magdalena, The Praying Man, What the Hell For You Left Your Heart in San Francisco and more. He had also received a uh, Guggenheim Foundation Fellowship and the American Book Award. He was a noted Filipino American writer. And frankly, I was dazzled when I met him. Ben was in his seventies, but he was brisk and quick of mind. He was soft-spoken soft and gentlemanly, but he had a way of paying attention to you. I, I know, for instance, that he paid attention to my few publications. For some reason, he had gotten hold of them and he had read uh, the stories that had appeared in Philippine Graphic or in Focus Philippines or Mr. and Ms., the periodicals that published my early works. Took, ben took the time to praise my work. Because he seemed genuinely interested in my development as a writer, I used to send him my published stories. We exchanged letters. When he learned I was looking for a publisher for my first short story collection, he very generously suggested I send it to Mrs. Gloria Rodriguez at New Day, his own publisher. And trusting Ben's recommendation, Gloria went on to publish Woman with Horns and Other Stories and other of my, uh, my books. I'd like to share some excerpts of Ben's letters because it gives you an insight into how he nurtured writers like myself and also some of his concerns as a um, Filipino writer in America. This first one is dated May 5, uh, 1989. A couple of weeks earlier, I had seen him at a literary event in LA and he had made a faux pas of saying I had gained weight. At that time, I kidded with him and said, I would never eat again. So he writes, dear Cecilia, going from the 100 degree heat wave of LA to the freezing temperature in Greeley quite undid me. And I'm not completely out of it, but I will, I always do. Thanks for the photos, looking at them, you exclamation point closely. I believe I misspoke. I hope you have resumed eating. You look much better now than ever, truly. The letter makes me laugh and reminds me of what the Savannah writer Lena Espina Moore said once about Ben. And this was when I was in Manila visiting with Lena and I, we used to gossip a little bit, literary gossip. And I told her about a woman writer in the States who was very devoted to Ben. And Lena sort of rolled her eyes up and said, Ben always had women around him. In his May 5 letter, Ben also references a published story of mine, actually a chapter of my first novel, a World War II coming of age story of a young girl, uh, first named a song of Yvonne later when the rainbow goddess wept. 
I enjoyed reading the crucifixion. The humor is very Filipino. I love it. When did you leave the Philippines to settle down here? I ask because you remember so much of a time long past. Do you know that I've never seen a Japanese soldier? I was here shortly before the war and I returned in 1946. Missed the Japanese occupation entirely, but I've written about it because I am a fictionist. Our imagination separates us from the others who don't have it. So perhaps I shouldn't even have asked you when you left the islands. There are those like us who never leave entirely. Um, so I like that. He uses us like, like I'm part of this little special group of writers. In a May 22, 1988 postcard, he writes, Dear Cecilia, thank you for the autographed copy of your book. Now I can read the complete collection. As a regular commuter between the Philippines and the U.S. every six months each year since 1981, promoting my books and teaching, I know what you mean when you say I am tired. Consider, too, that I am a 77-year-old man. But I keep busy, which to me is a way of survival. Manila is an exciting town to visit. I was born there, but the place has changed, the people too. I missed you at the poetry reading in which I participated in LA, April 19. I asked Linda where you were and she told me, sorry, our paths didn't cross. I'm leaving at the end of the month for the Washington DC area to speak and resume my work in progress. Wish me well as I do you. Thank you again, regards to Lauren. In this way, he encouraged me. I felt I had an ally in Ben. And as a woman who was a writer, a housewife and mother in America, I needed all the allies and support I could get. It was truly difficult to get published and acknowledged as a writer at that time. At some point, Ben started spending more time in the Philippines and I did not see him in Los Angeles. I also heard he was getting sickly. The next and last time I saw him was in 1995 at the book launching of my uh, second short story collection, Acapulco at Sunset and Other Stories. Karina Belasco at Anvil had arranged a big book launch in Makati and many of uh, Manila's literary were there. My mother and I sat in the front row listening, listening to, I believe it was Isagani Cruz opening the program, but then Isagani suddenly stopped. People, became very quiet. I turned and I saw an elderly gentleman walking slowly towards us. It was Ben, I hardly recognized him, he had aged. And people rushed over to lead him to the front where he sat between my mother and me. Later, he told me he was not well, he was not that well, that he was losing his eyesight, but that he had to attend my book launch. I could see that it had been very difficult for him to be there, but he had done so as a gift to me. I was very grateful to him. Less than a year later, he passed away. One of the sad things about living in America is that when writers like Ben or more recently Frankie Jose pass away, I am alone to mourn the loss. I do not have fellow writers to grieve with, to gather with and talk about good times with. But unfortunately, I had Ben's friendship. His belief in me as a writer validate, validated my own sense of being a writer. I was very happy to learn the Bienvenido and Santos Creative Writing Center was established at Bella Sal because a fine writer and human being like Ben Santos should be remembered and honored, especially in the Philippines. I want to thank you very much for everything you do.